What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today's video is one for the beginners. I am gonna try to teach you manual photography in five minutes. That's right, five minutes. I think we can do this, gonna be a great video. I've seen loads of other videos on YouTube uh, trying to teach people how to do manual photography, but I haven't really seen anything that just kinda cuts straight to the key points and literally five minutes after starting to watch the video, you could walk outside and you could take a half decent photo in manual mode on your camera. That's what we're gonna try and do right now. Now let's start by saying whilst I can in five minutes teach you how basic manual photography works and set you up to be able to take a photo what you can't do in five minutes is all the hours of practice and perfecting that skill and using what I teach you now again and again in lots of different lighting situations until you master it because once you do that piece you will be a fantastic photographer well fantastic at shooting in manual anyway <laughs> So let's do this, no messing around, let's get into it. So the first thing to quickly touch on is that there are three main things that will affect the exposure of your photo. Those three things are number one, shutter speed. In very simple terms, the faster your shutter speed, the quicker that shutter opens and closes and the more or less light it lets into that shutter. A much faster shutter speed is open a really short period of time, that will make your photo darker. The slower the shutter speed, it's open for longer and that will make your photo brighter. Simple as that when it comes to shutter speed. The next thing is aperture. Now, in very simple terms, the smaller aperture you have, and by that I'm talking about the smaller number, which actually means the bigger hole, the bigger aperture within your lens, because there are blades that open and close, and the smaller number we have, the smaller aperture or the smaller f-stop, actually the wider open those blades are. And in very simple terms, the smaller number we have, the more light is being let into your lens. So a lower aperture, you might often hear it called f-stop, that will make your image brighter. The bigger number or the larger aperture we have, which is a smaller hole, that will make your image darker. Simple as that for aperture. And the third thing is your ISO or ISO level. That is all to do with how sensitive your sensor is to light. So how much light do we want our sensor to absorb? The lower your ISO level, the darker your image will be. The higher the ISO level, the more light is being absorbed and the brighter your image will be. Now the important thing to remember is of course there are three of those settings and all three of them work together. In very simple terms if you imagine the sweet spot that is your ideal exposure. And as you adjust your ISO, your shutter speed or your aperture they will all pull in different directions and they will change that exposure. So you need to get the perfect balance between the three to get your exposure just right and end up in that sweet spot. And it's as simple as that. If you understand what I've just said you basically understand the three main contributors to good exposure in manual photography. So how do you actually make it work? So in any given scenario the first thing I tend to set would be my shutter speed and the real basic simple formula if you are photographing something that is moving fast so like maybe a fast animal, a sport, something like that you need a faster shutter speed to freeze that action so set your camera to like one one thousandth maybe one eight hundredth of a second something like that. If you're shooting a portrait like somebody standing still you can make it much slower you could bring it down to like one two hundredth of a second something like that and if you're shooting a landscape like something on a tripod where your camera is steady you could bring it down even lower maybe all the way down to like one sixtieth of a second I would say those are good basic starting points so lock that in depending on what you're photographing shutter speed is done for now next up is aperture so if you're photographing something like a landscape but you need lots of depth of field and you want everything to be in focus you need to set that aperture to a bigger number, something like f11, f9, something in that kind of range. If you're photographing something like a sport or maybe a portrait where you want your subject in focus but you want the background to have that nice like blurry effect to a very shallow depth of field, you want to set your aperture to a much lower number. As a general rule of thumb, set it as low as it will go. f2.8 for a lot of lenses, maybe if you're lucky you might have something like an f2 or even an f1.8. Get that locked in, once that is done you've got your two main things sorted. That leaves one, that's the ISO level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it. So for me, let's pretend we're shooting something that's moving fast. I've gone to one eight hundredth of a second and I've set my aperture to
to f 2.8 the next thing i'm going to do is set my iso level pretty much anywhere i feel like roughly where i feel it should be let's say iso 200 and you take a photo you're going to have a look at that photo if it's too dark you're going to bring the iso level up higher if it's too dark you're going to bring the iso level up again as a general rule of thumb you want the ISO level to be as low as it can so you don't get any kind of grainy image but high enough to make your image bright enough based on your other two settings that you have already done now of course as we learned at the beginning all three of those work together so if you've got your ISO level all the way up to like you know six four hundred and your image is really grainy and you think oh I don't want to have it that high you could always change one of the other two settings that we talked about you could make your shutter speed a little bit slower which means your image will get brighter as we talked about earlier earlier that in turn means you could bring your ISO down a little bit so your image gets darker and rebalances to get you back in that sweet spot that's how it works it is as simple as that that is manual photography go and play with those three settings see how they balance against each other take photos in the garden take photos of your kids go out on a walk and take some photos practice 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 and you will master manual photography I hope you guys enjoyed that I know the total video time is a little bit more than five minutes but the actual bit where we talk taught you how to do it was less than five minutes so I think we achieved it if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button for me really helps me out on my channel make sure you subscribe if you haven't already loads and loads of other videos to come on my channel make sure you comment below let me know what you think of the video and let me know if there are any other future videos that you would like me to do Check me out on social media if you would like to. You can find me over Instagram. The best place is at Rob Samble Sport right here. When you get over there, comment on something. Tell me you came from YouTube. That's always cool to see. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you. I will see you on the next video.